I want to welcome you to the Bible study for this upcoming Sunday, May 21st. I'm here with Pastor Jose Lebron, and we we have these conversations. What's going to be unique about it this week is that it will be my last Sunday here, Jose. It is unique. Yeah, I yes, don't know. Yes, I will <laughs> have. Or you can handle. <laughs> <laughs> well, we had a wonderful occasion for our deacon of worship and music, Joyce Finley, last yes. week. and. I came here way back in 1999, before you were here, right? Mm -hmm. and before then, I was born. Before, <laughs> well, now he's having some fun with me. Okay. Um, but then, as the years progress, so you came what year? Tell me again. Uh, well, I came ten years ago. Uh, ten years ago, 2013. Yep. January in 2013. I remember when we met you at the airport, you and your wife, Nieves, <laughs> and I said, the world is going to be changed here at Emmanuel because <laughs> we're going to have a chance to reach out in some new ways. And so. the word change, yeah, for us always. Yeah. 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 Emmanuel has been changing my life, uh, extremely changed, yeah, everything. Well, Trust what's me. so exciting about this coming Sunday is we're going to have one worship service at 10 o'clock, it will be in the main sanctuary. Yes, sir. And it will be one church, multiple communities. Multiple communities worshiping the same God. So part of what's going to happen is that uh, Jose and I will be, do, be doing some of the sermon together because you will help translate uh, part of the words that I will try, try to God share, help him. share that with the congregation. <laughs> the text, <clears throat> excuse me, the text for this uh, Sunday, the seventh Sunday of Easter, we are approaching... This coming Thursday, actually, which is the 18th of May, will be the day of the Ascension. And that was yes. the 40 days after, uh, after the, um, the resurrection. resurrection. And uh, then it leads into Pentecost, which will follow, as you reminded me, on the 28th of the May. 28th of May. Uh, celebrating really the 50 days of uh, yes. uh, coming into Pentecost. The readings that we're going to use for this coming Sunday include Acts chapter 1, and uh, this is where Jesus uh, prays for his companions, of course, uh, at his departure. Uh, there is a psalm, Psalm 68. Uh, we're not going to be talking about that, but I always commend the psalm to you to read that on your own, Psalm 68. Uh, Ephesians is actually a text from uh, the Ascension, Ascension week, uh, which would be a text from this past Thursday. Uh, I like this because it talks about the eyes to see the risen and the ascended Christ. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the Gospel for Sunday, John chapter 17, verses 1 through 11, where Jesus prays for his disciples. Uh, he prays, first of all, for himself and for his disciples and the church universal. Yes. So um, let, us, let us pray together. Amen. Gracious and loving God, God of all glory, your Son, Jesus Christ, suffered for us and ascended to your right hand, unite us with Christ and each other in suffering and in joy that all the world may be drawn into your bountiful presence. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. And really a, a word of thanksgiving, Lord, for all the years I've been privileged to be a part of Emmanuel Lutheran Amen. Church and the wonderful staff that has been a part of our working together. So. Uh, bless and keep us as we uh, continue to serve uh, now and forever in perhaps some new ways as well. Amen. 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 Huh. Let's see. So, <laughs> the first reading, Act, yeah, chapter 1, verses 6 to 14. So it's Jesus, yeah, talking to his disciples uh, about the coming of the Holy Spirit. It's interesting too, didn't it? Because Jesus, of course, is represented in Luke's writings uh, in both the Gospel of Luke and Acts, two books that he wrote. Mm -hmm. At the end of Luke, he tells the disciples to wait in, for, wait. Wait in Jerusalem because he will be sending the, the promise of the Holy Spirit upon them. Yes. And I guess in some ways that's good news for all of us because God in Christ is always sending his promises upon Amen. us. Amen. In the, in the text in chapter uh, 1 of Acts, as you read it, uh, the apostles are, are gathered together in uh, Jerusalem. And here's this one verse I pick up, verse 8. But you will receive power, says Jesus, when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Amen. Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Amen. To the ends of the earth, Jose. Yes, it's amazing, yeah. And uh, it's amazing as we talked previously about the, 
why Jerusalem and then Judea and then Samaria and to the end of the earth. Jerusalem represents us, yeah, my home, father, mother, and uh, Judea, probably my uh, siblings and, and cousins, and Samaria, the neighborhood around the community, and going here yeah, from the center, from my very own house, extend to, to the end of the earth. Yeah, where, where Jesus gives the Great Commission, you know, at the end of Matthew's Gospel, right? Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations. All nations. So, you know, this is, uh, this is really a beautiful text in terms of uh, the, the, these early disciples find themselves when Jesus is lifted up, they, they are looking into heaven. And, of course, it says here, two men in white robes said, why are you standing there looking up into heaven? Why are you standing there uh, and looking? <laughs> He really is sending them back into the, into the mission of Christ exactly. in the world. Uh, they have returned to, to Jerusalem. And then, of course, the whole book of Acts begins to detail how the disciples were filled with the Spirit and spread the gospel in, in new ways with, uh, with courage that came through the provision of the Holy Spirit. So, uh, Verse 12, yeah, called my attention, Steve, that says, Then they returned to Jerusalem from the Mount called Olivet, mm -hmm. and, uh, and then uh, decided to wait, but wait in prayer. Prayer for themselves. They were praying together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. It's amazing, yeah, that we can see prayers everywhere. There, there's, there is, you're right. All the time. As a matter of fact, you were saying before that um, prayer is just central to our relationship with Christ. Mm -hmm. In the book of Ephesians, if you look at that this then, week, in verses, exactly. uh, chapter 1, verses 15 uh -huh. through 20, 23, um, the author, um, the Apostle Paul, uh, prays uh, for the church in Ephesus that they might be given the wisdom and the power exactly. of the risen Christ. I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. And I pray that God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom, revelation, and you come to know him. And then he goes on to say, this is one of my favorite verses in all of Scripture, uh -huh. verse 18. So that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, there we go. you may know what is the hope to which God has called us, the the, the faith, you know, the hope, uh, the you know, riches. I, I, yeah, you know, I used to hear when people talk about the head and the heart. Sometimes people say you're wired in the head or you're wired in the heart. But uh, one of the longest, uh, one of the longest uh, journeys sometimes is from the head to the heart. You know, so that we. Mm -hmm. But it is, it is, it is a beautiful thing that um, uh, the authority of Christ is given in a way that not only. Um, remember where it says that Jesus emptied himself, taking yes. the form of a servant in yes. Philippians. And I think em sometimes when we think of the power of the Holy Spirit, uh, we don't think of that in the way that the world thinks of power, mm -hmm. of having power over people. Exactly. But rather, it's not power over no, people. It's, but it's it's the power. power to empty yourself, to serve others, to love others. Yeah. It, it, it requires really power <laughs> to do that. And humility, 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 right? Uh, yes. Because even when Jesus washed yes. the disciples' feet, uh, they they didn't uh, didn't expect him to be a servant to them. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, when I when I look back on on ministry here at the church, there is a, a beauty in knowing that a community we can learn to be a community that, in some regard, stands with the world, but apart from the world. Yes. In that we we don't always think like um, like. Uh, I guess you'd say the world that sometimes can be a rather uh, tumultuous place where we harm one another. Sometimes we read mm -hmm. the news and we see so much right now oh, that yeah. uh, people seem so to be much. against each other. So the church has a, a mighty place in the in the future. We pray for bringing people together. Amen. Mm -hmm. John chapter seventeen. Now this is again. Uh, on the night before his crucifixion, if you read this, let me let me just read part of this, if yes, I may, Jose. Okay, Absolutely. this is the gospel for Sunday, and as we as we go into that, uh, these will be the words of the Christ. After Jesus had spoken these words to his disciples, he looked up to heaven and said, 
Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so that the Son may glorify you. Since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. And then Jesus goes on. He says, I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours and you gave them to me and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. And then finally he says in the text for Sunday, I am asking on their behalf. Amen. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. Amen. Amen. You know, these, these, sometimes you, know, you read, read these, this high priestly prayer, and it, the words just keep wrapping around you. And it, sometimes mm -hmm. you say, I have to step back and look at it slowly. But, but there's no, no doubt here that Jesus is, is in, you know, in empowering his disciples with his promises. Yes, yeah. And, and the most wonderful, well, not the most, but uh, among many wonderful things that we receive here from Jesus' words and promises, is the one that he is giving us eternal life. Uh -huh. But it's a uh, strike me here in verse 3 that says, And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Right. So in that consists the eternal life. That Wow, this is so powerful. We were talking in our in our just the, earlier this morning with the staff about how eternal life certainly has this. A lot of people who come to Christ get focused on everlasting life, the world to come. Mm -hmm. But Jesus also directs us into the world as we live in it today, as we right? Live in. And so that's that's yeah. so important for us to to know. And we were also discussing that when you're when you're a Christian person, you are a part of a community. Yes. Uh, you are not out there solo, all nope. on your own. Not we are baptized into the body of the Christ, and and that body is the community. It's the collective yeah, experience, as we were talking previously to. The coming of the Holy Spirit, it wasn't only in one person, as we read in the Old Testament, that only came upon a king or a priest yeah. or a prophet. But no, no, no. The promise of the Holy Spirit is for the community, for all of us together, regardless of yeah, your language, your ethnicity, whatever. The promise is for us, and there is power when we are together. Well, this In is probably, probably a good place for me to say that, you know, I think it was on Easter Sunday, I had a chance to say to the congregation that we as pastors have to be ministered to as well. Do we not, Jose? Yes. And that's why a congregation many times, um, I, I've said to people along the way that we're no different than anybody else. We nope. have, we have we are li humans. lives that are, have simple, ups and downs yes. and, and, and sufferings and joys. But, mm -hmm. but there is really something about a pastor being able to come into a community and have the, the, the privilege of ministering. Ministering. And also the privilege of receiving the gift Absolutely. of the ministry of a congregation. This is the most rewarding thing of being a minister. Always I tell the people, especially when they ask me, Oh, say you were a physician. You were making a lot of money before. And I believe, yeah, maybe as a physician I will make more money than a pastor. But I say, well, yeah, maybe yes. But let me tell you, it's not about money or something. Here is about yeah uh, receiving Jesus, 
living in on this earth, this promise yeah. that is start already here, the communion of saints, this eternal life, the joy, this is the most rewarding thing. Yeah. Uh, you Steve, know, and this profession is amazing. I have, I have served, served two churches. The first one was named Ascension Lutheran in Ogden, Utah. And uh, it's kind of ironic that in many ways on my last Sunday we were talking about the Ascension. Oh, oh, and of course, wow. this presence of God, Emmanuel, Amen. which was so, I love the name, you know, oh, from yes. Matthew's Gospel and so on. I Emmanuel, uh, God with God us. With us. And with that, it's been a blessing for me and as well a blessing to work with you and all the people on the staff. It is for me, yeah. I, I, always I many I share with you and now we are for the listeners how much I really love uh, this congregation and the name mm -hmm. when I heard. What is the name of the congregation, Steve? Yeah, in our <laughs> conversation when I was uh, in a classroom in Illinois and you were here probably in your office. <laughs> Emmanuel, oh my God, yeah, yeah. this is amazing. Yeah, God with us. Well, Jose, may God be with you. Uh, and also and, with and you. And also with me <laughs> and with all the congregations as we come to celebrate uh, this, this Sunday here yes. in uh, the church in downtown Naples. We're going to again have one church, multiple communities. Multiple the service communities. will start at 10 o'clock on Sunday morning in the main sanctuary. So uh, We are a congregation with a mission. We are, yes. we are. May God bless you and we'll look forward to this coming Sunday at Emmanuel. Enjoy your week.